We have Dr. Jeannie Sinkfield with us, uh, famously five years ago spearheading the Chess Merit Badge, now the namesake of this tournament. Her maiden and, namesake. And also uh, the author of a new book. And actually we have a lot of listeners, Yaz, who, viewers that is, who say that um, our analysis is too advanced for us. Of course. Because they're just getting into the game. Maybe Precisely they saw about so. this from a mainstream. And what I find is what really the problem often is that they don't know algebraic notation yet. Right. So they actually can't just understand the language. Right. Um, and this book is about that. And Maurice is with Dr. Jeannie to talk about that and lots of other projects. Wonderful. We're with Dr. Jeannie Singfield, uh, formerly known as Miss Jean Pile of Rocks. <laughs> As she told us herself, <laughs> that is the Scottish meaning of the word cairns, which I had never heard before myself, but you told us at the opening ceremony. Welcome to the show. They could be for 100 feet high, right? A <laughs> big pile of rocks. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, tell us about uh, the inception of this tournament. Of course, we know that there's a lot of tournaments for guys uh, that, that get done, but to get an elite tournament for women must have been something special finally for you to see. Yeah, it's, there's been a lot of people who are saying, when are we going to have a really top-rated women's tournament? I mean, from just players in the club and people that we've met, you know, around the world. And, and so the staff kept saying, let's, we, let's do it. And then they should said that it should be named after me, so I said, okay. <laughs> Great. They do uh, all the work, I get all the credit. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you guys have done so much here already. Incredible mm -hmm. chess taking place all the time. What have you met, what have you felt from the young ladies you've met here so far? We've had, you've had dinner with them and gotten a chance to meet some of them. They're, you know, very happy to be here because there's not a lot of, let's say, well-paid tournaments for women that highlight the women. So they're very, very excited. Actually, most of them have never even been to St. Louis. Some of them have never been to the U.S. So it's fun. It's, and we've had, I was talking to a a, a, a young girl today, I think she's in middle school, highest rating was like 1,500, and she drove up from Texas because Anna Sutansky, who lives in Germany, was her coach. There you go. Have you gotten a chance to meet, really get a chance to talk to any of the players? Yeah, we had, we had dinner. I've talked to a variety of them, and, and it's, it's like they're really enjoying coming and, meet, you know, playing with these great players, and you have great commentators, and I was amazed at the number of grandmasters, female grandmasters. For those who aren't, you know, into chess, you have to understand how difficult that is to get that title. How many people we do you could, think? We could certainly have a lot more female grandmasters as well, but we have seven of them here playing in this competition right now. Uh, you also are an author. I know you always try to pick my brain for, I, for, for how to better improve the things that you're doing, but you did come out with this new book, read, Learn to Read and Write Chess. Tell us why you felt there was a need for this. Well, I couldn't read and write chess. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I was, you know, was looking at the material and I didn't like what was there. And, and I realized that it, it's like learning any foreign language, like learning math or learning computer languages, or even a foreign language, there, there are certain things that you have to break it apart to learn it. And what was out there just wasn't, if I wanted to have a mother teach their kid how to read and write at home, if they don't know how to read and write, it's never gonna happen. The kid's not gonna learn. So we, we broke it up so that there's pages on teaching them about the letters, and then there's pages teaching them about the board, and then about the structure of the moves, the order of the moves. I think a couple of grandmasters said they learned something from, from that. Well, it's very important to have someone who is not a chess player make that bridge between the non-chess player and I the chess player. I can play chess. chess, it's just the, the reading and writing part I'm in a hard. I'm in professional <laughs> chess player. That's, <laughs> what, that's what I really meant. I know you, you know the moves. Uh, you also have did what, have done an amazing initiative with the Boy Scouts, as Jennifer mentioned as well. And now the Girl Scouts have come in. But no, the no, numbers... It's, it's not Girl Scouts, okay? It's the Boy Scouts of America now have troops for, just for girls. Okay. But we don't call them, we call them Scouts BSA. 
Okay, I stand corrected. Right, great. Just just because we already have uh, uh, Girl Scouts in America, but I see. we had tw twelve girls who came and were, as far as we know, the first girls in America or in the Chest Merit Badge here in Missouri. Wow! Wow! Right where we had the launch for the Chess Merit Badge five years ago, where 200,000 boys have earned the badge. And we see some great footage here of some young ladies, and there's Jennifer talking to them as well. And it must really warm your heart because your numbers are so ridiculous. I mean, how many new people have you brought to Chess? And with a Chess Merit Badge is not something that's easy to attain. You actually have to know your stuff. Yeah, what, what are your numbers a, now? Uh, 200,000. That's more than the membership in the U.S. Chess Federation. And they have to teach two others how to play chess. Wow. So that's 600,000. Is it two others outside of the, well, outside it, of their troop? No, it, it could be people in the troop or people, people okay. outside the troop. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's what you're doing is, and unlike like clubs, like the big cities have clubs. The small towns are struggling to have clubs. But uh, troops are located in tiny towns across America. So we're getting scouts to learn to play chess everywhere. And they're playing at summer camps. And they're doing uh, eagle projects, building chess parks. So you're building the base in I'm a way building. that has never been done, probably in the history of US chess. No, that's the idea is to find and grow chess players. Well, think about it. If you're going to be a professional chess player, you have to have an audience. As well. And the audience has to be able to read and write chess and know how to play and then love the game. And you want to have, to, and most people aren't going to become professional chess players. Like most kids who play Little League don't even get into high school ball. Doesn't mean you don't love the sport, right? Absolutely. Well, finally, at the opening ceremony, there's a little trash talking going on between you and Rex there. You were saying something about Karen's cup is going to be even better than the Singfield cup. <laughs> <laughs> Tell well, us about it. You guys are very competitive with each other. Well, you know, he was do he's been doing all of this stuff up here, okay? You know, the best players in the world and whatever. And I'm just trying to, you know, compete. So I get more down here. We're teaching the kids and this stuff, then the women can kick ass too. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Well, we will leave it right there. No better words have been said. Thank you so much for everything you do for chess.